Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today we're revisiting the Radeon R9 380 because a lot of you have requested me to revisit the Radeon R9 380 because I took a look at the GTX 960 uh, quite recently and didn't include the 380 there because we were looking at how the 960, whether the GTX 1660 is a good upgrade option for those with 960s and that the 380 didn't really fit into that comparison. Anyway, I thought since we have looked at the 960, we might as well compare the 960 and 380 head to head to satisfy those of you who wanted to see that comparison happen. Now, both of these GPUs were released in 2015 and they both retailed for $200 US. They were mid-range products though, at the time they were more what you would consider to be sort of lower mid-range, budget mid-range, entry level. Anyway, in my day one review, which was published over on TechSpot because I wasn't making videos four years ago, I found both GPUs delivered a similar level of performance. So I said the following, picking between the R9 380 and GTX 960 will come down to personal preference. And again, the Nvidia card has an edge in power consumption, cooling and overclocking. The reason the GTX 960 was a more power efficient product was largely down to the fact that it was almost 40% smaller and both did use a 28 nanometer process, though AMD used Global Foundries while Nvidia used TSMC. However, it wasn't too long before AMD got their drivers sorted out and the R9 380 started to pull ahead of the GTX 960. Now, four years later, I've decided to see how they compare and I'll be comparing them to modern GPUs such as the GTX 1660 and half a dozen other models. This testing was initially intended to be used as an upgrade guide, so I'm not using dialed down quality settings to try and find the 60 FPS sweet spot with these old GPUs. And I'm also not retesting with the GTX 1050 or RX 560, for example, as they aren't upgrade options for either of these GPUs. Rather, the intention here was to show you how much faster products such as the GTX 1660 and RX 590R when all things are equal. After all, if low quality presets are your jam, then the R9 380 or GTX 960 will still suffice. But if you want to enjoy modern games and all of their glory, well, knowing how these GPUs perform using high quality settings really is a must. Anyway, I hope that explains why I'm using high to ultra quality presets at 1080p. Okay, so let's talk testing. For this one, I'll be closely looking at performance at 1080p in about a dozen titles, and then we'll jump to a 33 game breakdown comparing the R9 380 and GTX 960 head to head, along with an R9 380 comparison with the GTX 1660. Then finally, the test system includes a Core i9 9900K clocked at five gigahertz with 32 gigabytes of DDR4 3200 memory. Okay, let's get into the results. First up we have Apex Legends and right away we see the R9 380 is a good bit ahead of the GTX 960, hitting 51 FPS on average opposed to just 45 FPS. This 13% boost was very noticeable and in fact it's probably more the 15% increase in 1% low performance that you'll really notice. For those of you keen on this title, something like the RX 570 will provide almost a 50% boost in frame rate or for more than double the performance the GTX 1660 will work nicely. Wow, okay, the performance uplift seen in the Division 2 is uh, rather massive. Here the R9 380 was 44% faster than the GTX 960. This isn't a particularly good title for NVIDIA GPUs, at least Pascal and older. And here we see the 380 was even 15% faster than the 3GB GTX 1060. That said, with just 39 FPS on average, you'll want to dial down the quality settings for player performance. Alternatively, something like the RX 570 will produce over 45% more frames. Moving on, we have Shadow of the Tomb Raider and we find yet another title where the R9 380 is again beating the GTX 960 by a comfortable margin. This time it was 18% faster with 40 FPS on average and was even playable at 1080p. Though again, if you want to use something like the R9 380, reducing the quality preset will enable a smoother gaming experience. Alternatively, you could upgrade to a GTX 1660 for a 90% boost in performance. We see another shellacking in Forza Horizon 4. Here the R9 380 decimated the GTX 960 by a whopping 31% margin. Perhaps more surprisingly, the 380 offered highly playable performance at 1080p with the ultra quality preset. Very impressive stuff that. This placed the 380 roughly on par with the GTX 970, so again, a very impressive result. Next up we have Hitman 2, and here the R9 380 was 8% faster than the GTX 960. The game was also quite playable using the ultra quality settings at 1080p, but for a 120% performance uplift, the GTX 1660 uh, works rather well. 
The R9 380 also does reasonably well in Just Cause 4. I mean, it's not the world's most optimized title, and yet we're still seeing playable frame rates at 1080p, if only just. The GTX 960, on the other hand, wasn't really playable. The 380 was just 6% faster for the average frame rate, but 20% faster for the 1% low, and this made a significant difference to the gaming experience. Moving on, we have Resident Evil 2, and here we have another solid win for the R9 380. And here we see a 15% frame rate increase over the GTX 960. Again, the game was playable using the maximum quality preset, but ideally you will want to dial back the quality settings or upgrade to something like a GTX 1660 or RX 590. Even in Fortnite, the Nvidia loving Battle Royale, the R9 380 still managed to edge out the GTX 960. At this point, you kind of have to ask the question, can the plucky little Maxwell GPU get a win in anything? Not sure about that one, we'll have to look a bit later on in the video, but here it was a whisker slower, though overall I would call this one a tie. Performance was really close in Metro Exodus, here the R9 380 was just 3 FPS faster, though at these low frame rates that did equate to an 11% performance increase. Still, for this one, you will absolutely need to wind down the quality settings or upgrade to something like a GTX 1660, which offered a nice 90% performance boost. No surprises here, the Pascal and older architectures get smoked in Rainbow Six Siege. Here the R9 380 was 25% faster, hitting 60 FPS on average and providing a noticeably better experience. We see another display of pure domination for the R9 380 in Battlefield 5. Here it was 21% faster than the GTX 960. The game was also very playable as well, and with a few minor tweaks could easily average over 60 FPS in our test. Performance in World of Tanks was pretty even. This is an older game that's continually updated, but as is the case with Fortnite, Nvidia has a bit of input here. Still, the R9 380 managed to edge out the GTX 960 by a few frames, so overall a decent enough result. Finally, we have Far Cry New Dawn, and here the R9 380 was 9% faster on average, but did deliver a smoother and more consistent experience thanks to a 19% improvement in 1% low performance. Okay, so we're looking at total system consumption here, and the R9 380 is somewhat let off the hook because we're using a high-end rig for testing. Here the total system consumption was increased by just 12% when comparing the R9 thread in GTX 960. In a lower spec rig, that figure would likely grow to over 20%. Still, even in this example, we're peaking at well under 300 watts, so it's not like you need a massive power supply to handle the R9 380. Okay, well that appeared to be pretty one-sided in the 13 games that we just looked at, but I have of course tested 33 games, so let's swiftly move on and see if the GTX 960 was able to win in any of them. Well, it did win in Total War Warhammer 2. 1 out of 33 isn't bad, is it? Oh, and we also saw a tie in F1 2018. Performance was also close in Project Cars 2, Wolfenstein 2, Warframe, World of Tanks 4, Nightquake Champions, and Ghost Recon Wildlands. For the most part though, the R9 380 was faster by a 10% margin or greater, and this is reflected by the 33 game average, which saw the 380 delivering 14% more performance. The performance uplift seen in Strange Brigade and The Division 2 was massive, while we also saw big wins in Sniper Elite 4 and Forza Horizon 4. Overall, a solid win for the R9 380. It's certainly proven to be the better investment after all these years. To be honest, the findings won't be terribly surprising to any of you who have been following the progress of these two GPUs over the years. You'll be quite well aware that the R9 380 has been getting the better of the GTX 960. I myself often test these two GPUs and new AAA titles, and we've seen time and time again that the 380 is a good bit faster than the GTX 960. For those of you who are still rocking an R9 380 and are looking for an upgrade, uh, something like a cheap RX 570, that'll work quite well. Alternatively, if you are looking at spending around $200, then I strongly suggest the GTX 1660. The GTX 1660 was 87% faster on average, and bar a few titles offered at least a 50% performance uplift. Moreover, we saw gains of around 100% or better in a dozen of the titles tested, so the 1660 is certainly a worthy upgrade if you've been holding out all this time. For now though, that is going to do it for this one. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to hit the like button. You can subscribe for more content if you haven't already and you enjoyed this video and you thought, I want to see more of that, then you can... You can hit the, the subscribe thing, and if you hit the bell, it'll notify you, and then you are in the running to type first when the video comes online. That's always, seems like it's a lot of fun. People, yeah, they seem to really enjoy that. 
Uh, and if you really enjoy what we do, you can also support us on Patreon. There's some pretty cool perks. If you jump over the link, you, you can see those. Anyway, thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve, and I will see you again next time. Or at least I hope to, especially if you subscribe and hit the alarm bell. See you next time.